Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, uh, Sin City Preacher. I want to make this video to confront the false teaching that uh, a man is justified in God's sight by our faith, but we're justified in man's sight by our works. Have you ever heard that claim? These are the people who love the book of James and try to find some way to make it all fit and conform and agree with, with Paul and, and the, the message of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. So they try to find some way to answer all these problem verses in the book of James. So they say that when uh, James says that, uh, show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works, that that's referring to... Um, that uh, in man's sight we're justified by our faith, by our works, because we can't see the faith, so we have to determine if they're saved by looking at their works. This is a false doctrine. It's a horrible false doctrine, and I want to explain to you through the scriptures now uh, how this is can be proven to be wrong. First, let's look at Romans uh, three twenty. The Apostle Paul says, uh, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So here we have the Apostle Paul telling us that uh, in God's eyes, the way God sees it, we're justified not by our works, but by our faith. Well, a lot of people, uh, you know, would, would not argue with that. Uh, there's a lot of people who fly the banner of, uh, you know, faith alone in Christ alone, and, and they'll say, yes, we're justified in God's sight by faith alone. But then they turn around and say that in James, uh, it's correct that uh, we're justified in man's sight by our works. And they'll use James 2.18 to make that case. It says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Sounds to me like quite a lot of boasting going on by James here. And you know, we're forbidden to be boasting. Uh, in Romans 3.28, Paul says, Therefore we conclude a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Whereas boasting then, it is excluded. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, For by grace we are saved through faith, and this is not from ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And then we have in the book of James, the author saying that... Uh, Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. I don't know about you, but it sounds like boasting to me. And that's what I hear from a lot of these Lordship works salvationists uh, that uh, use the book of James uh, to prove their case. Let's also examine what um, one a big, big problem with this false doctrine is that uh, that you, you determine if someone is uh, justified or saved uh, by their life, by their works. Uh, you, have you seen changes in their lives? That's, the, that's what proves if they're saved or not. And this false message has led a lot of people to um, insecurity. Uh, they do not have this blessed assurance of their salvation. They have doubts. Uh, it, it, it's uh, led to depression. I'm sure in some cases it's even led to suicide because people get so worried whether they're really saved or not because do, there, do they have enough works in their life to prove their salvation. Well, if you're watching this video now, you, you don't have to prove your salvation to me through your works. I don't have to prove my salvation to you by my works either. Uh, and, and Jesus said, 
in Matthew twenty three twenty seven, he talks about uh, this, uh, what, what we see outwardly. He says, uh, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto white, whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. So Jesus tells us there are people, when you look at them outwardly, you'd think that they're very, very good person. They're religious. They're good citizens. I mean, I can think of a lot of examples. Uh, the Mormon missionaries that come knocking on the door, the Jehovah Witnesses, uh, uh, the, the, some people who give a lot of money to charity, and you say, oh, what a wonderful, charitable person they are. Are we going to say, because uh, outwardly they look like they're charitable and uh, they're, they're good citizens and they're moral and ethical, outwardly, are we going to then give them the stamp of approval and say, well, they're going to heaven because they must be saved because what, look what a good life they're leading. Well, Jesus says, no, you cannot judge their out, by their outward appearance what's on the inside. So uh, whether, whether it is in God's sight or in man's sight, we're not, we should not judge someone's salvation by the outward appearance. God looks in the heart. God knows what they're, if they are a believer or not. Uh, and as a man, as a Christian, one who relies entirely on Jesus Christ for my salvation, I would never try to judge someone's salvation based upon how they're leading their life, if they're successful at you know, repenting of their sins and turning over a new leaf and attending church and, uh, you know, becoming a very moral, ethical, upright citizen. No, that's not, that's not how I would judge someone's salvation. I would simply uh, go to Romans 3.28. It says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law without the deeds of the law. So I'm not going to use their deeds to judge their salvation. I will judge their faith. So what we really need to do, instead of examining someone's life, we need to ask them what their faith is. We need to ask them, what do you believe? What are you basing your salvation on? You think you're going to go to heaven? Why? And if they tell me, that they believe they're going to heaven because they put their faith in Jesus Christ. He paid for their sins. He promised them eternal life. You know, if that's the kind of testimony I get from them, then they're justified because of the faith that they've demonstrated. However, if I ask them, on what basis are you going to go to heaven? And they start saying, well, look at all the wonderful things I've done in Jesus' name. You know, I fast, I pray, I went on a missionary trip, I give to charity, I do this. If they're trying to be justified based upon their own performance, then I would feel comfortable in saying, no, uh, it's clear that you're not saved because your faith is in yourself rather than putting your faith in the Savior. You must depend completely on Jesus and reject the fact that you could be saved because of how well you've performed. So the point I want to make is really very simple. Uh, we, we've, uh, we've talked a lot about the book of James and the problems in the book of James, and this is just another one. Uh, people believe that uh, they can use this, uh, uh, answer this problem in the book of James where it says, uh, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. And they're trying to say, well, that's just talking about uh, you're, you're justified in man's sight. Well, if you think that man is justified in the sight of man by their works, then that's a lie from the devil. Don't judge someone's salvation based upon their works. That's what James is doing here. And that's why this teaching is false teaching. We only judge someone's salvation. God judges someone's salvation by their faith. We should judge someone's salvation 
by their testimony. What is your faith? What do you believe? Okay, I hope this uh, uh, clarifies this, this problem and another problem in the book of James, how it's being misinterpreted, misunderstood, uh, and uh, misrepresented what its meaning is. Uh, and I hope that uh, if you have been troubled by this in the past and worried about, well, uh, am I really saved? Am I doing enough works? That I hope you can just understand now that it, your, your works have nothing to do with it with your salvation as far as determining if you're saved or proving that you're saved or keeping your salvation rest in the arms of Jesus Christ believe in his promise believe that Jesus does have the ability to give you eternal life believe he promises eternal life to everyone who comes to him for it and believe he's faithful he keeps his promise bless you all in the name of our great Savior God his name is Jesus Christ.